Welcome to the Expert Talks by Calkine TV. Sage here, and today's guest is Mr. Alex Tweedale, Governance Lead at Checked. And for some background, Checked is a network for creating digital credential businesses, and Checked is a blockchain utility aiming to make decentralized digital identity a commercial reality through native payment rails for the World Wide Web Consortium Verifiable Credentials. So I'm excited to bring you live today, Mr. Alex Tweedale, Governance Lead at Checked. Welcome to the show, Alex. Hi, yeah, thanks for having me. It's great to be here. Fantastic. Well, since you've joined us, let's make the most of our time together. How do you at Checked ensure that the network is safe from any data leakage or hacking? Well, I think the first thing to understand is almost how self-sovereign identity works. Um, normally, the way data is stored is it's held by companies and we have to request access to it every time we want to, to do something with our data. You know, we've got so many different accounts all over the internet, you know, Twitter, Facebook, Amazon, you name it, we've got an account for it. And the problem is that we have no control over where our data is. And therefore, if it can get hacked, we have no idea whether it will, wh wh you know, if it gets hacked or not. You know, if, if there's a big data breach, which there's been lots of recently in say an airline, all your data gets given to a fraudster or a criminal and you have no recourse for that. What self-sovereign identity does is it recenters data around the individual so you, as a, a holder of your own data, get to have it on your phone and you can consent to where that is used. So it natively prevents against large data breaches and hacks by instead of having data in being held by companies, it is held by you, the individual. So that's probably the main thing for that question. That's fantastic. Um, sounds like something that Sir Tim Berners-Lee himself, the inventor of the World Wide Web, would advocate. Um, I believe that was his intention, to have a decentralized web, and it sort of uh, grew, and, and uh, he lost control of what the true intentions were at the rapid, uh, sorry, rapid speed it grew at. So thank you so much for breaking that down for us in an easy, comprehensible manner. And if we move along to the next point, what is the significance of self-sovereign identities in the digital world. You touched on it a bit, but how does it also relate to metadata? We hear of Facebook getting in trouble quite a lot for how they use metadata or a bit of controversy surrounding what they do with it. Could you expand on that, please? So I think self-sovereign self -sovereign identity or SSI is uh, all about trust. You know, how can I trust that we get messages all the time, I'm sure, from people, you know, be, as fraudsters or fishers pretending to be companies or people, you know, that they are not. And it's very difficult to verify who you are in a digital domain. You know, in the real world, we have, you know, our physical documents like our driving license, our passport, which attest to our identity. But online, what do we have? We don't really have anything. If you said, prove your Alex Tweedon and work for checked, I could maybe send you you know, a photocopy of my passport or some, you know, like, or some, you know, education records or employment history. But it, it's so difficult to just prove in an easy way that you are who you say you are. Um, so with self-sovereign identity, it enables you to not only hold and control your data, but also it enables trusted interactions between persons and companies online. Um, and by centering data around the individual in that way, um, and by allowing you to consent to where it's used, you empower the user to act on its uh, GDPR data subject rights by default. So metadata that is usually used by companies like Facebook, you know, because you have an account there and it's being processed in the background, will be flipped on its head. And in, in return, you can consent to where your metadata and personal data is used going forward. Thank you again. So um, these days, especially in the evolving hybrid workplace, data can be so important to learn more about who's working for you, what their interests are, and that way how to engage them in work more and to use the knowledge they bear, I suppose. So data's become so much more central to the modern workplace and how employers can be gaining from their uh, human resources. So how can digital businesses benefit from verifiable credentials in your opinion? So this is a really interesting question. 
Um, so just to clarify for the audience, a verifiable credential is like a packet of signed and sealed data that you can hold unilaterally on your phone. Um, and when you're on board, so and a verifiable credential can be incredibly important for businesses because currently a business has to spend so much money uh, on checking your identity. So say you want to onboard at a bank or a financial service or an insurance company, they have to go through this onerous process every single time where they check your physical documents and check that you're a real person. You know, so many times I've taken like a selfie of myself with my passport and companies have used that as valid uh, know your customer or KYC. With a verifiable credential, um, it cuts the cost down of that KYC check significantly. Currently, KYC checks cost about it, between two and ten dollars, and maybe even upwards of that for um, extensive checks. If you have a verifiable credential which is signed cryptographically and you hold that unilaterally, you can provide that to a third party, and they can pay something like twenty cents for the for verifying that credential. And that is a huge margin that of cost that is saved for that company. So verifiable credentials help companies save money in KYC and onboarding costs. And also what we're doing at Checked is we're creating new payment rails. So a verifier of a verifiable credential of data could pay the issuer of that data a specific fee. And that creates new incentives for issuers to issue me verifiable credentials because they can get a recurring revenue stream every time it's used. So we try and incentivize each actor in the uh, in the ecosystem to to use verifiable credentials. That sounds amazing, especially in today's climate where we're seeing the need for more people, especially in like the medical professions and so quickly needing their help that these things could get overlooked. So that's great to hear, Alex. In your opinion, how are Web3 and decentralized business identities at scale interrelated these days? Oh, that's a great question. I think digital identity and Web3 has a huge overlap. You know, when you think about Web3 and, and the metaverse, we're thinking about porting you know, our avatars or profiles between, say, different games in the metaverse. Or with Web3, you know, we're accessing centralized or decentralized exchanges. But there's no, and, and the one thing that I would like to bring up is regulation is trying to catch out DeFi and CDFi with things like the travel rule. And it's doing that by trying to enforce identity requirements on virtual asset service providers, so VASPs. Um, and currently, the centralized middleware or middlemen in, in DeFi and Web3 need to provide identity information about the customers. So if you use an exchange to, to trade crypto, uh, you have to that exchange will have to, by law, provide your identity information to a regulator. But if you use decentralized identity and verifiable credentials here, you can actually create bilateral trust between different organizations without having to go through a centralized uh, intermediary. So I can trust who I'm interacting with online because we can share verifiable credentials between each other. And that, and if you start you know, building in identity into Web 3.0, you can actually get around travel rule compliance by design and by default, because we can prove who we are unilaterally without reliance on any third parties. So I think there's, there's one angle which is proving who you are and being able to onboard and use uh, DeFi in a in a more easy way and by um, you know, where you can comply with things like the travel rule. And secondly, if you attach identities to metaverse items like avatars, like rank, um, you can start porting that between games in a much more easy way. I think people use things like NFTs to convey identity in Web 3.0, but verifiable credentials are a much better way of doing this. Because with NFTs, all your data is actually stored on a ledger or in an IPFS uh, container somewhere. With verifiable credentials, you actually hold all of it off ledger, say on your phone. So it's much more privacy preserving than using something like an NFT for uh, identity in Web 3.0. Oh, that sounds great. So at the moment, um, is Checked involved with any DeFi protocols in particular? 
That's a good question. Um, we're certainly having a lot of exploratory conversations. So Checked is built on the Cosmos SDK. Cosmos is uh, a big sort of ecosystem and chain for DeFi, a bit like Polkadot, Ethereum, you know, Cardano, and all of these uh, big names. Uh, so we're working probably locally initially within our Cosmos ecosystem to build out identity functionality into decentralized exchanges, into NFT projects that are happening. Um, and then we're also, we've also recently launched a bridge to Ethereum. So we're trying to bridge uh, our identity functionality and also our token to uh, Ethereum as well to expand our reach, which is exciting and lots of cool things to come. Very exciting. Yes, Cosmos definitely is a, a great protocol for blockchain interoperability. And lastly, we're reaching the end of our discussion today. What is Czech's product vision for 2022? You've touched on it a bit there, but would you have anything else to add? Yeah, I mean, I think the biggest thing for us is, so I've mentioned a bit about self-sovereign identity and how it works by the individual taking back control of their data, but Czech's real USP is to do with the payment rails involved in uh, self-sovereign identity interactions. So. You as an individual, for example, could monetize your own data, a bit like how Brave's basic attention token works. So you could consent to, say, sharing extra preference data with a third party. Say Spotify or a music company wants to use my, wants to use my data. I could pay a specific, uh, I, I could request a specific fee, say 50 cents to share extra preference data with them and take ownership of my own data in a monetary sense. Also, building up the payment rail for the verifier paying the issuer. So let's just give an example of I get issued credentials by a bank and I present them to a travel company to go on holiday. That travel company may pay a fee to trust that I have verified data and that fee, some of that fee might go back to the initial bank. That payment rail and that incentive flow for verifiable credentials is something that we're going to be building out over the next few months using specialist technology like uh, privacy preserving revocation registries, which is a whole different, a, a, a whole different uh, sort of rabbit hole to get down into. But um, there's lots of great work going on at Check. I think the payment rails is one thing, but also integrating with different Web 3.0 and DeFi ecosystems um, and projects that are ongoing to, to sort of create this coalescence between decentralized identity and decentralized finance, I think is where Check is going to really fit in uh, you know, in sort of Q2 and Q3 this year. That's fantastic to hear. Sounds like a very exciting time to connect with Checked. And thank you so much, Alex, for making time to share your insights. Very valuable indeed. No, thank you so much for the time. It's been a pleasure to speak here today. And I hope that the, the audience is interested in Checked. And, you know, always feel free to reach out to me for any more information on, on Checked. So I'm happy to share. Lovely. Well, best of luck. Yeah, thank you. All right. Goodbye. And if you've just joined us, we had a very inspiring discussion. Mr. Alex Tweedell, Governance Lead at Checked. Please watch the full interview at Calkine Media's YouTube channel. And keep watching Calkine for more of these live expert talks and market insights. Till the next episode, stay apprised and invest wise with Calkine Media.